Phil Brown played me the uh, Jimi Hendrix Purple Haze multi-track. It's on six tracks, I think. And it's all crunchy and, you know, the bass sounds like it's plugged into the desk yeah. overloading. And and whereas now, everyone's buying plugins to make things a bit distorted, you know. Yeah, no. So it's like the other way around. You know, you were sort of, then they were striving for clean, clean sound and couldn't get it. Yeah. Now we get clean sound and we want to make it dirty. Yeah. Discuss. And I suppose we, you know, we don't have those limitations. If you're a band and you've got your own gear and you, yeah. you can record a million tracks in Pro Tools and there's no deadline. Yeah, I mean, I was funny, done, I, I felt on the way up here, I was just listening, I was going through my iPhone and the Foo Fighters came up. Mm. And they've got that record that they did, uh, Sonic Highways, where they yeah, made a TV show. Yeah, a different studio, yeah. And I was listening to the, the track... Um, the main song off the, hmm. and the first thing that I realised is that in the heavy section at the beginning with the open hi hats, the snare is on a gate, and you can hear the the hats every time they hit the oh, snare. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, "That's brilliant," because you don't hear that anymore because no. people automatically put a trigger on it. Yeah, so you don't hear that, and there's <laughs> like the biggest band in the world, and it's okay. Yeah. No one's going, oh, yeah. And then you can hear this. It's the proper snare sound because it's a bit dull, yeah. you know. <laughs> and it's got this, <laughs> hasn't got this quack, quack. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a lot that's in that. Quite thing. encouraging. There. It's, it's I think that stuff is encouraging. Authenticity yeah, of the uh, the recording that happened in that studio. Yeah. yeah that's what they were. Yeah. Cause, I mean, because when I heard it, I haven't really listened to it properly, but it, said, it, it seemed like they'd kind of homogenized it all a bit, even though they'd gone to all these different studios. All the tracks kind of still sounded. I th yeah, they probably had to somewhat. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if they probably mi recorded it. I don't know if they mixed them all in there. Yeah. Butch Fig probably went back to his went studio. Back in, yeah, did it in his basement. Away, but it's yeah. nice to know that, oh, look, they've got a great job yeah. and we're not going to ruin his parts by putting samples on. Yeah. You know. Interesting. I mean, I, I've heard stories about metal guys that they have, everything's triggered mm. and they don't even need to be playing a drum kit. No. <laughs> <laughs> But then with heavy metal, if you listen back to the like early Metallica and things, I'm sure there's a bit of trickery going on there, mainly with editing from what, what I've seen on the videos, mainly with editing. Mm. And not the Black Album, which has got massive triggers all over it, but there's stuff earlier than that. And it sounds amazing, doesn't it? I think it's like the autotune thing. Every, like all vocals now have to sound yeah. like... In tune. In tune, like so <laughs> in tune. <laughs> and then... Yeah, it's a tough call, isn't it? Because you you do you, you hear all those great old records where they're not as in tune. But if you're sitting there with a vocal and you've got Melodyne and you yeah. can make it better. But once you start, mm -mm. so you can have a vocal that is totally acceptable mm. and sounds great. But once you start tuning it, mm. you can't go back. No. That's Gil Norton's phrase. Once you pop, you can't stop. <laughs> yeah, you know, once you, know, you the, the Pringles, it matter, Pringles mate, you'd, you know, you'd start doing something. I engineered a session with him, and he you sort of put, you'd move something. He goes, no, Pringles, mate. <laughs> that yeah. was it. You know, you had to carry yeah, on. Yeah, because you right. just there. You lift that note. You lift that. Oh, well, then you lift that note, yeah. and then and the next thing you know, but and that's how people want to hear things. Yeah, but yeah. but then people are always surprised as well when you watch some of these masterclasses and things, or watch a bit of TikTok. You know, they have those video things. And people be surprised that on the on Adele, for example, who's a great singer, I suppose, she doesn't use autotune. And then people are like, how does she not use autotune? It's like, it's fine. Mm. And it's the same with the if you tune all the instruments up, then everything is like, mm. Well, that's like, yeah, I mean, again, on Get Back, you know, there's no guitar tuners even in those days. <laughs> yeah. they? They're not even, they're not yeah. even kind of, they're just tuning to the piano or whatever when, yeah. when Billy Preston turns And there's up. that thing where everything is a bit, of a mix in terms of tuning and tempo. Mm. Not everyone's hitting the beat at the same time. And but if it all happens of, in the room at the same time, it yeah, it kind of just work. comes up, yeah. But then I guess most of the records you're doing, everything has to be pretty gridded, doesn't well, it? it? Well, the, yeah, I, I always laugh because whenever I meet a band, they always talk about the dream of recording it all at the same time mm. in the same room. Mm. And then when they try do that, they realise that it's not a dream, it's a nightmare, and it's just horrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, having to sit next to the drummer, and then you can't overdub stuff because there's drums on all the mics and things. Mm. And I think if you're a great like band that does all that kind of stuff, it's fine. But if you're a heavy band, you know, you can't. You need to lay it down, and the drummer's got to go and whack the 
yeah. crack out the drums for 10 takes and come back in and and then you listen to it and then do the bass and then do the guitars. Because by the time you get to the guitars, you've got the sound, you've got all the mics on it and you're being really picky about how it's coming out. Mm. You wouldn't have got away with that in a live in the room no. thing. But um, I mean, do you get, so if you've got a good drum take, do you then send the band off for lunch while you beat detective? Yeah. 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 Is that a bit of a showstopper sometimes? Though? You know, if everyone's excited, it's like the bass player's tuned up and he's ready. He's like, oh, can we do the bass now? And you're like, yeah, but I'm just going to spend an hour and a half beat detecting the drums. I try not to beat detective too much. Yeah. And I, a lot of the time, I, I, I have this weird thing in Pro Tools. I know, when all the drummers I work with, I don't know if it's a Pro Tools thing, but they'll go and play the drums and it sounds fine. And I always like to, and then if you look at on the grid, it's always off the grid. Mm. So then I'll shift it back onto the grid. So it's still in time with them, but so then they are they're just a bit closer to the grid. They're closer on the grid. Yeah. Like you move the whole thing on the grid. Yeah. And then just do a beat a bit of a light dusting of beat detective <laughs> to make sure everything's in time. Because you don't want a bass player to play to no. something that's not in time. No. Right? But I think as well, I think everyone gets set as long as you give them their time, then hmm. you go, right, we're gonna do bass now, and then you get set up and hmm. you do all that stuff. Hmm. And they're okay. I don't, I don't. I don't know many bass players that are itching to play. No, straight, this is true. Straight, <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> after the drums, <laughs> you know. But um, I think bass is forgotten as well at the minute. People are quite happy to just DI, aren't they? Yeah. You know, I'm guilty of that. I've got a Kemper. I'm quite happy oh, to right. just yeah. plug it in there. Sounds good. Yeah. You know, but uh, Guitars, yeah. I prefer to amp up. If I was going to say, yeah, I presume you still amp your guitars generally. Yeah, and then I got my Kemper, which I use all the mm. time. So, um, do you use some elaborate miking technique for guitars? Then you do. You do what was it? Dave Eringer sends pulses through to get his mics in phase and all sorts. Yeah, of stuff. Do you no, get I don't that? do any of that. No, no. Um, I like to if it's he if it's overdriven guitars, then I like a four two one, and I like a, a an active ribbon. Uh, and then I like to make sure they're in phase, and then that's enough for me. That's mm. fine. And you just point them straight at the same speaker? Or? No, I, can't, I like to, I prefer different them to be speakers. on different speakers, yeah. yeah. And then you can hear if it's not in phase, and you can kind of move it around a little bit, mm. and that, that's, that's fine. Mm. For that kind of stuff, I think that, that works. But it's a cheat. But then I do DI it, mm. and then so when I'm editing, I've got the DI yeah. signal, so I can see exactly you know, the transients, the transients, yeah, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, otherwise yeah. It's, it, it's just a mash, otherwise, isn't it? Yeah. Straight line. Yeah. <laughs> but if I'm doing any other guitar, like overdubs, then I, I like to have a bit of fun with it, really. Right. See what, what you can do. Like I like to use the room, like the album I just did at Vader. Mm. When we did all the overdubs, we had the guitar set up in the room, and then we had the room mics as well, mm. and then we moved the guitar around a little bit mm -hmm. to kind of reposition the room mics. Right. And then, so my idea with that is that when you bring up the take and you obviously pan the single mics, then you've got the room behind it. So it feels mm. like it's in the room. Ah. And when you do the other one, it's the same thing. So you've got the stereo room. You've got the stereo room, so yeah. You so the, you can the move close the mics. Yeah. So then I think you get the feeling of a of a real musician a yeah. little bit because well, you've got the trick. room behind yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's quite nice. That's clever. And I, I remember um, reading a, a uh, interview with Steve Albini a long time ago. Mm. And what he used to do is when he did his vocals, he would set up a room mic on a gate. So oh. like, this is, I don't think he uses Pro Tools anyway, does he? No. So um, then when the singer kind of sang really loudly, the gate would open up. Oh, right. And then you get the room going going onto the track at the That sounds time. like, isn't that what the Tony Visconti heroes mm. story? Yeah. That's what he did apparently. That's a great idea. Yeah. And I think if you're working with like angsty singers, yeah. You get the feeling that they are, they have ramped up, yeah, because you've yeah, got can, the room come up. Behind yeah, because a lot of those Pixies records sound quite, you know, the Steve Albini yeah. Pixies album sounds a bit like there's a bit of room on the. Vocals, yeah, and I think it? well, he's got the room on everything. Yeah, and but yeah, so when got a good has, room though, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> well, I've always wanted to work at his studio. Yeah, apparently, um, well, that's good fun. But um, yeah, yeah, I, I worked with the band called Kingskin, and they then went off and did an album. You know, they just. Because he only charges like two hundred quid a yeah. day or something, so they just yeah. went to America and didn't help with him after. I'd, I'd... Yeah, apparently you can do. Yeah, and you, you get all his techniques and yeah. everything. And um... although they did ask me then to mix it 
when it, when they get back because they didn't like his fixes. Yeah, well, I think um, I think in the nineties he came over here and did quite a few things. Yeah, and his thing is, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but he's a conduit for mm. the band. Mm. So he doesn't produce he doesn't in any produce. way. No, that's right. He, makes he just takes yeah. what you're recording, mm. records it in his best way, puts it on tape, mm. and that's it. Yeah. And a lot of the records that he did would then get remixed yeah. for, you know, yeah. modern radio. But you can't imagine that, can you? Because you, you want to you tell them if they're not doing something right, or you want to make, you know, if you, you were trying <laughs> to make a great record, you go, hey, play, don't play it like that. Play, you know. I suppose so. If, you, if you're with a band... And you do great pre prod, mm. and you get everyone working at the right place, and have the, mm. you know all the guitars are sorted, and you go somewhere like that. Then mm. maybe you can do that. I suppose so. Know? Yeah. So do you do a lot of pre production then? And is that I try to. Did you go to a rehearsal room with the band? Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, no. nowadays you know they've all got setups, so they yeah. can send you things over, and you can stick it in Pro Tools and edit it, right? And, and kind of yeah. get a picture of it. Mm. Whereas when you go in the room, I tend to just have it on my iPhone and then go back to the hotel or whatever and, mm. and listen to it and try and make sense of it. Yeah. It's that thing, you know, saying earlier that you, if you're in the same room and, and at the same time, you, it, it, it's hard to think of stuff. And then you go back and you just put your headphones on and have a listen while, you know, and then it's like, oh, okay, oh, maybe you should cut that. You're right. That doesn't that second verse doesn't need to be that long. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Was it you were saying about putting the pedal down and uh, miking up the piano? Yeah, for, so for I do, I've done ambience. that a few times. You know, when you've got you're in the studio and there's a piano in the corner, mm. and you do get a nice sound out of it. You know, mm. you just have some mics in it's there. Like a reverb. Yeah, it's just. I think especially if you're doing something a bit ap atmospheric. Yeah. It can really kind of hold the the bottom. I think there's a lot of stuff you can do in Pro Tools now that make those kind of things a bit more redundant because you can set delays and yeah. lo-fi them and yeah. kind of do all that stuff. But There's something about doing it at the time, isn't there? Yeah, yeah with, absolutely. With that kind yeah. of thing. It's, it, it feels, even if you can exactly sonically recreate those sorts of effects, there's something a bit more satisfying about doing it and a bit more yeah. fun. You know, it's like that Periscope mic that's come out. Have you seen that? No. It's got a built-in compressor. And right. it looks like a bit of copper tubing, and it's the world's first mic with a built-in compressor. <laughs> really? And, it, and it's, it doesn't sound lo-fi. It's, it's like a proper, yeah. you know, capsule in it and everything. But it's somehow they've got uh, some sort of brilliant. You know, you have to phantom power it. And, I th but and it, I, th I think with that stuff as well. Yeah. If you do it while you're making a song, mm. I think there's nothing I heard. Uh, when you work with a great engineer, one of the things that I like is. They make it sound good as you go along. Mm, mm. And so there's none of this, well, don't worry when I get home. Yeah. It's going to sound great. Yeah. It kind of, and when you start doing with things like that and you're having a bit of fun, mm. the song starts sounding really good in the studio. Yeah. And I think, uh, and I think that's brilliant. It's well, like, I think it makes people perform better as well, doesn't yeah. it? If they can hear things like, it's like vocals when you're doing a vocal you want to hear it with a compressor yeah. while you're singing, don't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. Because I get people, like somebody's just asked me, it happens regularly, you know, oh, I want to buy myself a setup for home and just do a little bit of demoing. What should mm. I get? I'm going to get a Focusrite, PreSonus, whatever th audience interface. Yeah. And it's got mic preamps. And, and you think, well, yeah, but if you had an external mic preamp, then you could kind of go into 1176 yeah. or something, and then you go into your computer, yeah, yeah. and it would be a whole lot better, you know? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, one of the other things I always notice is that whenever I do vocals at, with an engineer, especially if it's an engineer that I've ne not necessarily worked with, I'm quite happy to, cr especially if I know what we're, we're doing, you mm. know, I'm happy to crank all these things. Yeah. Because I know where it's going and I'm not worried about, oh, oh, well, you're going to get home and it's going to be over compressed. Mm. Well, I don't mind that. No. You know, it's fine. If I, mm. if it, obviously, if I, if I'm in the studio and I go, well, yeah, that's not working, but it, oh, it, it sounds good. If it sounds good, and, yeah. it, and and originally, like these old records, that's how they would do it because then they wouldn't necessarily be able to do it afterwards. No. So you got got the sound you want to tape. And um, well, I think also you were kind of at the mercy of the gear as well, in the sense of everything was a bit more crunchy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Phil Brown played me the uh, Jimi Hendrix Purple Haze multi-track. It's on six tracks, I think, and it's all 
crunchy and you know the bass sounds like it's plugged into the desk yeah. overloading and and whereas now everyone's buying plugins to make things a bit distorted you know yeah no so it's like the other way around you know you were sort of, then they were striving for clean clean sound and couldn't get it yeah now we get clean sound and we want to make it dirty yeah discuss uh, yeah no, I, get, I absolutely i mean i um you know spend a lot of time putting decapitator over things yeah. just to kind of break it up because they've ha especially if i'm mixing something that i haven't worked on they come across too clean you get vocals that have no compression on them mm. and they're quite difficult to work with yeah because you you have to compress them to get get them up front mm. um no i think people worry too much about the end result without really thinking you know Maybe they don't have enough experience, I think, like you're saying. Yeah, I and think they worry it. about what their idea of a perfect vocal mm. taking a vocal sound is. Mm. When in reality, again, you, you, there's all these great records that have been made where they've used the guide vocal. Yeah. Because that was the best vocal take, and that just happened to be on an SM57 or something or whatever, and it sounds great, doesn't well, it? Well, yeah, and like uh, all the tracks on Let It Be, the vocal yeah. on a rooftop, you know, yeah. it, it, they didn't worry about punching lines in yeah exactly oh, so, and it's you know it's the beatles man you know yeah didn't get much better than that yeah i do it's funny when i watch that i do feel sorry for ringo Starr because he's just sitting there <laughs> <isn't he? laughs> and i think oh maybe you should have come in a few days later when they actually have the songs yeah it's like well there's a, a bit of, of him time, writing but... octopus's garden at one point which, <laughs> yeah. is, which is good in one of the later episodes so that's quite nice and george kindly mm. comes and helps him yeah brilliant but the rest of the time it's like yeah <laughs> Just waiting up on his yeah. pedestal. I guess that's all part of the process. You know, he kind of works out what's... Because when they first do get back, he's not doing... Doo -doo 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 yeah. You know, it's growing later he's on. He's just sitting high up there, isn't yeah. he? Like, Behind the screens eventually, yeah. Sort of looking down on them. Yeah. Mad. <laughs> so there's a separate booth here. So do you stick people in there if you are tracking a couple of people at the same time? Yeah, so the last band we did, mm. we tracked it live and then mm. obviously did overdubs but mm. um so we had the singer and the guitarist in there yeah. the drummer in here with the bass um or did we have the bass in there i can't remember but it's a couple of bass players it? yeah so we enable yeah we're able to do it separately yeah because presumably even though you want to do everything separately you want to kind of get an idea of what the song's going to sound like. yeah so. yeah and i and again it, it's i prefer to do it like that mm. rather than go let's lay some guides down it's mm. a bit boring isn't yeah. it so i think if you do do it play. like that they talk to each other and then you do a few takes well you think you get a better idea don't you of yeah. whether it's working at that tempo key whatever arrangement yeah you know, absolutely all that sort of stuff yeah and it's nice in there because you, mm. you can see them as well yeah you know, so you've so. got a couple of windows going on aren't you through to the different rooms it's a very nice arrangement here isn't it you say you've got the drums or guitars or something and you're in a small room like this you've got this box here that's just resonating constantly so if you put some mics on it and i would usually close the lid and put the cover over it and then if you put the something heavy on the pedals to, so the sustain is on mm. then uh you just get this you know rumbling through and i'm not sure if i've done it i think i might have done it. i don't know how well it works but i think if you tape down the keys then you get it in the key of the song but i'm not sure if that is true well, it, yeah. Not, if, if you did, it, if you didn't have the sustain pedal down, you and you had the keys yes, pressed, then it would be fine. Or if you yeah. had a like my old grand I used to have, you get the middle pedal, the sostenuto pedal. Yeah. So if you press the keys and then press the middle pedal down, it keeps those only those keys sustained. So, it does, so you do get the keys. So yeah. you can do it with that. Oh, okay. Yeah. But this is, hasn't got a third pedal. No, is it? no. It's only, has, only has two. So you, you need to upgrade your piano then to be yeah. able to do that. Then you then you could. Uh, <laughs> but if, but on, on on like high down dynamics, like the kick and the snare coming through. Does it not just sustain on for hours though? Well, you get that kind of. It's like a. It's almost like a an, an echo plate. You know, yeah. you just get this kind of nice thing and if you like if you're doing something like ambient mm. and you've got infinite you, sustain it's, it, yeah i think it's a really interesting yeah. sound i say i say i say <laughs> <laughs> funny, th <laughs> <laughs> funny thing happened to me on the way to the studio